I don't know what precipitated me using. I just did it. I was a single mom. I had three kids, and I don't know how they never got took away from me. People would come to your house and give them to you for free. Somebody just came to my house, and I just started doing drugs every single day. I mean, I did it all the time. But I still went to work and still, like, I guess, function. If I, leave, if I left, it was at, like, night when they went to bed, and I'd be home in the morning before they went to school. I don't know how I did. It was a mess. Um, I would probably, I don't even know when I would sleep. I would just keep doing drugs and just, you know, get the girls off for school. I tried to hide from them, because, but they knew what I was doing. I just make, make them go to school. I would run all day doing drugs or go to work. And then um, when they come home, I would buy a McDonald's or something. And I'm, I might either stay in my room while they was home or, you know, I would just have very little contact with them. Me and this boyfriend got into a, a fight, altercation, and um, when they, when somebody called the police, and when the police came in to get him, he wouldn't come out, so they went to the basement, and they found all kinds of paraphernalia. Sheriff's Department. I can't get this guy out of my house. He's Where's he at? Back there, in the, down in the basement. Ma'am, what are these? Um, I have no idea, sir. No you idea. You have no idea? No. Well, what am I going to find out when I look them up? Uh, I don't know, sir. What's going to be on this when I test it? I don't know, sir. You don't have any idea? Maybe because he, he put it there, that guy did. Who, the, the guy downstairs? Yeah. He put this in your house? Yeah. Why did you let him in here with this in your house? Because I was dating him, I guess, and I don't know, sir. You haven't done any drugs? Nope. So if we take you in right now, you're not going to test positive for any drugs? Nope. Who's these? Um, I don't know, sir. Anybody have a prescription for them? No. I don't, not me. You don't have a prescription for him. Does no. he? I don't know. I ask him. Okay. Because if nobody's got a prescription bottle for these, yeah, you're all going to jail. I went through the drug court program because they sent me a letter in the mail. I guess they were trying to find participants or whatever. And I didn't uh, want to get an attorney. I just wanted to get it over with. So I just took the drug court program. I was in drug court for 19 months. I hated everybody. I had the worst attitude. And all this went on for a long time. <clears throat> but I don't know, it just, I hated even doing this program. The toughest part in drug court was for me was the structure of drug court. When you first go to drug court, you gotta go to um, court every Friday, you gotta go to the probation office. Once a week, you have to go to like three bridgeway classes, like treatment classes. And then you have to go to um, two, two or three AA meetings. You gotta be accountable for, you know, they don't, if you miss one of those meetings, you go, well, there's like a uh, consequence. You either go to jail, they give you some kind of sanction, or, you know, you might have to do community service. At first, you're not ready to do it, but then you have to, you have to change, you know, those people that you're hanging out with. You can't go to the same place that you was before. You have to change, I mean, it's the truth. The stuff that they tell you is the truth. You gotta change your people, place, and things. Ten months later, and I'm like, Wow, this is what they're trying to say to me. <laughs> I get it, I get it now. My life now is great. I have a grandson, me and my girls are really close. And I even got my daughters a preaching drug court. You know? I do charity work, I, uh, I'm in the alumni program. I've known Shelly for a really long time. I worked with her at Denny's in Warrington all through high school. I worked with her for about five years there before we came here. And she's a lot different now than what she used to be. Um, I don't even know where to start. She struggled a lot in certain areas of her life and it showed in her work environment. I know she had a lot of trouble with management and stuff sometimes having to be sent home early or just showing up and you could just tell she was having a tough time not being able to focus and stuff at work. Um, kind of high strung and hard to work with sometimes but I still love her and then when she ended up coming to Bob Evans several years later I had left the restaurant business for a few years and I had heard she was working up here at Bob Evans so called up here and talked to her and we kind of reunited she put in a good word for me and they had nothing but nice things to say about Shelly came up here started working with her and it was a complete contrast. Um, still, she's always been a good person, just kind of, you know, had her good and bad days, I guess you could say, but now she's a hard worker. She picks up shifts 
left and right for everybody. She's one to go out of her way for anyone. She's one of my favorite people to work with. Actually, I get tears because she's like a second mom to me. So, I love her. I mean, I would think that them drugs are the worst thing in the world. And I don't think I would ever go back to them. Because I think, because they got me scared. And I don't want to, you know, I'm, they make me scared. Like if I see people that I know do drugs, I still start shaking and stuff and just get out of there. But I don't know if I'm going to smack the people or knock the foil out of their hand or what I'm going to do to them. I don't know and I preach a lot to them. Yeah. So they probably think I'm some kind of psychopath. <laughs> At my graduation, Judge Sutherland stood up and started crying because he knew my mom, and he knew my aunts, and he knew my brother, and he finally broke the chain of, you know, drug abuse, because it's been a whole life of drug use within my family. When I became circuit judge in 2000, uh, I had wanted for a couple of years before that to get a drug court started because I was tired of recycling the same people uh, over and over again, and we needed to do something to stop that uh, cycle of people using and, and reusing and continuing to use uh, drugs. Uh, we finally got the program up and running with the first people in drug court in December of uh, 2001 and uh, it's been very successful ever, ever since. Uh, we've had very few uh, people rearrested after they've graduated from drug court. We have had a couple, uh, but our success rate has been uh, very high compared to most of the drug courts even, and uh, we've stopped to seeing, in some cases, the same people in court time and time and time again for the same sorts of offenses. Uh, in the long term, it will be a benefit to the entire community. I look at it as turning uh, tax consumers into taxpayers. And that has indeed uh, been the case, and I think it's been a benefit to the community all the way around and will continue to be so.